Hi, it's Dwyer. Dwyercrime.blog. It's November 28th, 2023. From time to time, you might hear some purring in this video. It's because my lovely cat has decided that she is going to do this video with me. So, that's okay. We can make this a team effort. But first, remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, one of the things I discuss with my eight-year-old daughter from time to time is how much the world has changed, how our perception of things is completely different today than it was, let's say, 15 years ago or 20 years ago. So let's look at the murder of Dr. Jack Wilson. You might recall this case out of Alabama, right, where his wife, Betty Wilson, is supposed to have orchestrated the murder. This is the case where we found out that Dr. Jack had some health problems, had his colon removed, right? He was wearing a colostomy bag. It impacted the couple's sex life. The couple agreed to have an open marriage. You might recall that the prosecution at trial then tried to, according to some, show that Betty Wilson, the doctor's wife, wasn't a proper Southern lady. And one of the ways they supposedly did this is they brought in a black man to trial with whom Betty Wilson had had a sexual affair, right? When this story first broke, the idea was that you were dealing with Southern justice, that Betty Wilson was trying to, you know, simply get a fair trial. And the prosecution was using heavy-handed tactics to play the race card to make the argument that she was a loose woman and that because she was a loose woman, the jury was supposed to believe that she then orchestrated the murder of her husband in a murder-for-hire situation. Understand, the alleged hitman who approached police had a history of mental health problems. He had had a problem with drugs and alcohol. He had had criminal convictions in the past. By the time the trial was over and by the time this story was presented uh, on true crime shows, he had recanted his testimony. Also, the story here involved a Southern belle, Betty Wilson's sister, Peggy Lowe, right? Understand, after Betty gets convicted, Peggy Lowe goes on trial, and Peggy Lowe gets acquitted. Peggy Lowe was a mother of two. She was a debutante. She had been the homecoming queen back in her school days. She was, or at least had been, the wife of a preacher. She had several friends from church. Many of them showed up at her trial and sat in the gallery. Now, the hitman story was simply preposterous. At the time this story broke, we all thought, come on now, they're just trying to pin this murder on someone. Some lowlife approaches the police with some ridiculous story that involves a homecoming queen supposedly working with her sister to hire this hitman to kill the sister's ill husband, who happened to be a doctor, who happened to have money, that, of course, would be passed on to his estate after his murder. 
right? The story sounded ridiculous. Folks, as I make this video, there are Facebook pages seeking justice for Betty Wilson, right? You can imagine when I heard this story years ago, as a black man here in the United States, and I heard that they got her black lover into court to testify that, yes, I was sexually involved with her. You can imagine how that sat with me at the time, right? I thought, wow, this is the race card. They're just confirming what many African Americans believe, which is that African Americans are viewed negatively. Any romantic relationship with an African American will sway a white jury in a place like Alabama, right? There was outrage. There was indignation. Let's revisit that case. I'm just telling you the world has changed. I believe we now are much more analytical. And by we, I just mean the true crime community. We're much more analytical than we were a decade and a half ago. I believe we understand things that we did not know then, including the value of corroborating evidence, right? We understand now, too, that someone will play the race card to claim that they're innocent when, in fact, the evidence shows that they're not. So the soundbite, I'm a victim here of racism. They brought in my black lover to smear me with the jury. That'll grab you in a soundbite. But the question is whether or not you did the crime. Is there corroborating evidence that the prosecution is pursuing that shows that you are guilty? So let's revisit this case from the point of view of the alleged hitman, right? Is his story true or not? Let's revisit that. Now, the hitman's name was James White. According to James White, he meets the former homecoming queen, Peggy Lowe, the sister of Betty Wilson, at his daughter's school in Vincent, Alabama. Right? He meets Peggy Lowe in his capacity as a parent. Right? Now, apparently, James White often did carpentry work at the daughter's school. Now, he develops a friendship with Peggy Lowe, who he has a crush on. He ends up doing some carpentry work for Peggy. And, of course, they frequently talked on the telephone. Now, just recognize this would be corroborated by telephone records. Right Before James White hears about a Betty Wilson, before he hears about a Dr. Jack Wilson, He's friends with Peggy Lowe. Now, years ago, we would have thought, gee, come on, this guy's a lowlife. He's here, you know, making accusations about respected members of society. Now I believe we know better. Right? His version shouldn't be interpreted by his social status and criminal history. Rather, we need to judge it by the evidence that exists. So just to understand, James White claims that one of the reasons he kills Jack Wilson later was to win Peggy Lowe's affection. Well, as Jack White, excuse me, as James White is getting to know Peggy Lowe, Lowe, according to him, tells him that she had a friend who was in a bad marriage, who was being mistreated by her husband, right? She tells James White 
that her friend wanted out of her marriage. White learns in March of 1992 that this friend was, in fact, Betty Wilson, Peggy Lowe's sister. So White at first tells Peggy Lowe that he had connections who might be able to arrange for the murder of Dr. Wilson. Right Between late March 1992 and early April 1992, Lowe and White discussed having Betty Wilson's husband killed. He testified that they agreed upon $5,000 to get the job done. He claims that Peggy Lowe called him later in April to tell him that her sister had given her one half of the money to give to him. Now, folks, years ago when this story broke, it sounded preposterous. Right, simply preposterous. But what I want people to do here is to focus on the evidence. Right, this hitman who had drug and alcohol problems and apparently financial problems, has a version of events that either sinks with corroborating evidence or doesn't. If he's making up a story, then none of what he says should be true. There should be big time holes. If he's making up a story, that story would not have a high level of specificity. It wouldn't name the places where he is supposed to have met the other members of the conspiracy. Well, James White testified that he met Betty Wilson at Lake Guntersville State Park, where she gave him money in a book to finance his trip to Huntsville to murder Dr. Wilson. Now, this statement names the park, claims that the money was put in a book. In other words, it has some idiosyncratic facts here. He doesn't say, I showed up, she gave me the money. No, it's, I showed up at this place and I got the money in a book. Right? Well, understand, this part of James White's story was corroborated by security guards at the park. Right? Third parties who have no reason to lie for James White. The telephone records also support James White's story. And, of course, believe it or not, the book he received was in his possession. Well, let's continue. White further testified that he meets up with Betty Wilson at a Chick-fil-A restaurant in, he gives the name of the city, Parkway City Mall, where she gave him a bag with a $100 bill. Now, folks, he's named the restaurant Chick-fil-A, right? In other words, his story isn't vague and ambiguous. I met her someplace. I think it was some kind of fast food restaurant. No, he names the restaurant and he names them all. Believe it or not, there's a corroborating witness, the restaurant manager. Saw them. There's also a music store associate who saw them. There's also a Kmart employee who saw them. In other words, James White's story has third-party witnesses. He's naming places where he actually was. He's naming books that he actually received. So let's continue on with White's testimony. 
White testified that he met Wilson at the mall a second time where he got into her black BMW. He names the type of car. He knows what kind of car Betty Wilson has because he's been in the car, right? And he claims she drove him to her house. Now, understand who corroborates seeing them in the car together by the house. It's someone who knows Betty Wilson. It's Betty Wilson's neighbor who saw them in the BMW. Well, James White gives further testimony. He testifies that he also met Wilson at the Logan Martin Dam where she gave him a 38 caliber revolver wrapped in a sweater. Folks, this part of the story is also corroborated by the police who found the gun near White's trailer. So let's talk about the murder. Dr. James Wilson comes home. He walks upstairs. James White, who of course knows where they live because Betty Wilson has taken him to the house in the past. James White is upstairs waiting for him. Things evolve. James White then starts hitting Dr. Wilson with a baseball bat that he found in the house. James White claims that he blacked out after that. He also admits that he stabs Dr. Jack Wilson during their interaction. Now, let's talk about whether there's any evidence that supports the claim that Dr. Jack Wilson was killed by being hit with a baseball bat. Well, the prosecution was able to present a forensic pathologist, Dr. Joseph Embry, who was able to testify that Dr. Wilson died from injuries caused by the beating to his head, as well as by stab wounds to his chest. The forensic pathologist, again, Dr. Joseph Emery, was able to say that there were nine lacerations to Dr. Wilson's head that were consistent with wounds that would be caused by a baseball bat. In other words, James White claimed that he hit the victim with a baseball bat and that he stabbed the victim with a knife. The forensic pathologist examined the victim and found that the victim's wounds were consistent with that version of events. So, what I want people to realize here is that there's a lot of evidence against Betty Wilson. Yes, I believe the prosecution played the race card by bringing her black lover into court, right? But just understand, without that evidence, there's an abundance of evidence that corroborates James White's story. If James White was an alcoholic, and if James White, you know, was someone who had mental health problems, why are there witnesses in multiple locations that place him in the presence of Betty Wilson? Let's talk about some more evidence. And it's uh, riveting. Just understand that 
White testified that when he received money from Betty Wilson, he used it to pay some past due utility bills. He claims that he had a bank account that was overdrawn by over $400 and that he deposited $500 into that bank account. Right, folks, the bank records show that that's what happened. He was overdrawn. He suddenly gets money from a mysterious source at a time that fits his timeline. He then, of course, deposits money into the bank. So what I want people to do here is to revisit this case. It's not a whodunit, right? In my opinion, James White was telling the truth in the confession that he recanted. Right? There are too many third parties who saw him and Betty Wilson in places where he claimed he and Betty Wilson were. Right, Lake Guntersville State Park. The security guards saw them together. Right, Chick-fil-A restaurant in Parkway City Mall. Several people see them together. Betty Wilson, him in the black BMW. The neighbor sees them. Right? The book, the gun, he has them. The way he claims the murder went down matches the forensic pathologist's findings. Right, folks? I have absolutely nothing against a couple having an open marriage. Right, if Betty Wilson is a sexual woman good for her, right? She had some lovers who she enjoyed. Folks, that part of the case is a distraction. The main part of the case is the fact that James White's story adds up. His set of the facts matches third-party recollections to the point where I believe beyond a reasonable doubt that he did this crime at the urging of Betty Wilson. So, you get the trial of Peggy Lowe. One of the reasons why this case seems to have received so much public attention is the fact that Peggy Lowe who James White claims is the person who told him about a friend in a bad marriage whose husband was a problem and needed to be eliminated. Right? Peggy Lowe goes on trial. And Peggy Lowe, of course, claims that, yes, she was friends with James White, but that James White was obsessed, was obsessed with her. She pointed out, in her case successfully, because she gets acquitted, that she had no beef, none whatsoever, with Dr. Jack Wilson. Why would she want him killed? She claims that James White has a vivid imagination. Right? That James White may have done some things to impress her that she didn't ask him to do. Now, in part for legal reasons, I'm not going to say that Peggy Lowe was guilty, right? She was acquitted. A jury found her not guilty, right? She had a high profile in the community. But what I will say is, in my opinion, it's simply not possible for James White to have made this up. 
I mean, what are the odds of him mentioning Lake Gunditsville State Park and then having security guards back up his story? What are the odds of him mentioning Chick-fil-A restaurant at Park City Mall and then having numerous people, including the restaurant manager, back up his story? What are the odds of the neighbor backing up his story of him being in the black BMW with Betty Wilson? What are the odds of him just randomly coming up with the story of getting money in a book and then having the book? Or having the 38 caliber revolver, which, by the way, was not used in the crime. Right? He references the gun that he got from Betty Wilson. Right? And so, while it was shocking at the time, you could imagine this early 90s murder, by the time it gets to the trial, and by the time they you know, have Betty Wilson saying, hey, I'm a victim here of gender bias. Uh, people are punishing me because I was in an open marriage, because I had at least one black lover. Right, you can imagine at the time, since the accuser was supposed to be some lowlife, right, a guy with a criminal history, a guy with drug and alcohol problems, and since he was talking about learning about the husband from a former homecoming queen, and then killing the doctor, and then making accusations against the doctor's wife. Right? At the time, it sounded like a lowlife accusing society people. Well, let me just say, in my opinion, the lowlife had at least the facts against Betty Wilson on his side. Right? The low life, too, alleged low life, if you see the world that way, even gives a date, May 15th, 1992, when he's supposed to have been sexually intimate with Peggy Lowe. Right? Understand, that could have been punctured easily. Peggy Lowe is a mother of kids, she's an elementary school teacher. Right? One would imagine she'd be able to say, hey, look, on that date, I was someplace else. Here's what I did on that date. Right, folks, the level of specificity of James White's story gives it credibility. Right, so again, I'm not going to opine on Peggy Lowe's guilt, since she's been found not guilty by um, a jury. But what I will say is I think that Betty Wilson conspired with James White to kill her husband. I believe the Alabama jury that found her guilty reached the right conclusion. Let me hear from you. I understand that there have been movements to free Betty Wilson. I understand many people find James White to be inherently unreliable, especially since he recanted his confession at some point. Please feel free to make that case with whatever facts you believe are relevant in the comment section of this YouTube video. I will just say that when I hear an alleged hitman give this level of detail, and when I hear the defense have to make concessions, right, yes, Betty Wilson did meet with James White. Right, Betty Wilson claims that she was helping James White with his attempts to get off alcohol, with his attempts to join and be a member of Alcoholics Anonymous, right? When I hear concessions from the accused, 
that add up to, yes, I knew James White. Yes, I did meet with James White. And when you have a situation where the forensic pathologist says, yes, my findings are consistent with James White's story, that leads me to the conclusion that James White is being honest when he talks about being hired by Betty Wilson to murder her husband, right? Also, when James White receives money in furtherance of that conspiracy, and then bank records show that he's making bank deposits in line with his timeline. That just validates not only his guilt, but the guilt of Betty Wilson. That's how I see it. I hope you leave your comments. I look forward to reading them. Thanks for stopping by.